hello and welcome into this video where we are going to be using Stamping Up's new Eden Garden collection to create a pinwheel tower card. Now this is a fancy fold card I've been meaning to have a bit of a go at for a little while and the launch of this new collection seemed like the perfect opportunity. So um, with no further ado, um, let's let's start playing so let me bring in my downward camera um, while I'm doing that for those of you that don't know me my name is Helen Jennings I'm a stamping up demonstrator based here in the UK and um, it is my passion to create cards and to craft and um, I'm welcoming you to join me as I do exactly Sorry. <clears throat> Don't want to take that camera out altogether because um, otherwise the sound stops and that's not what we want. Um, so let's bring in this Eden Garden collection. Um, so this is me and this is where you'll find me www.loverducky.co.uk so do go and check out my website and um, you'll also find me there on Facebook um, under Lover Ducky and Pinterest as well as here on YouTube um, and Instagram and all of those places. Let's bring in the Eden Garden collection and I'll just pick up the rest of the bits that I've dropped on the floor. So the Eden Garden Collection is a stamp set and die bundle that is a very early release from the January to June mini catalogue um, that we'll be releasing to customers um, at the beginning of January. Um, the date eludes me for the moment, but um, yeah, regardless, it's an early release, so you don't have to wait to whatever date it is in early January to get your hands on it. You can get your hands on it now. So this stamp set and these dies are going to be available in that January to June catalogue, as well as being available to purchase now. Now it is a, um, a distinctive stamp set, so it is a um, red rubber, rubber distinctive stamp set, cling set, um, and you've got these sort of foliage type images, um, this large one here, and these small images, and then you've got some really nice sentiments in there. Um, my heart is tied to yours, tug if you need anything, isn't that lovely? Um, dear friend, how are you? Hello there, sending hugs. Let's celebrate everything. So it's quite a nice set for, you know, somebody for sending cards to somebody who's having perhaps a bit of a rough time. Just want to reach out to them and let them know you're thinking about them. So really lovely. The dies that go with it, you've got like this gorgeous big um, foliage frame. You've got a smaller frame in there. You've got this little piece of foliage just here. You've got this really nice banner. For putting your sentiments on and you've got this really lovely border die so a um, really nice set of dies really lovely set of stamps now the other things in this collection that you can currently get your hands on are only going to be available up until the end of the year or the very you know first day couple of days of january at the latest um and they are sort of a while the stocks last. So if they run out before then, then they will no longer be available. So it really is a question of getting your hands on these things while you can. And there are three elements to this, these additional um, supplies. And these additional supplies really work quite well for Christmas cards and Christmas projects, um, you know, which, which makes them fabulous um, and, and they're foiled papers, they're specialty papers, you're really going to want them. So as with all of our foil papers, you've got your foiling on one side and then you've got a um, unfoiled sort of more of a sort of backgroundy type image on the other, but incredibly useful and work alongside each other beautifully. Um, so there's another foiled image there. 
apologies if you can hear coughing and things in the background. Both my husband and I have not been very well. He's He was tested positive with COVID. I just seem to have had like a flu bug. So um, if you hear coughing, croaking, things going on, I do apologise. Um, but look at this beautiful foiling on here. So it's all gold foiled. It's like a splattery background almost like sort of thrush egg type but green rather than blue there's some more foiling I think we've seen that one before this one has got foiling on it's just got like these gold dots in the background there really lovely and that is sort of an ombre effect paper there that would make a fabulous scrapbook page this one's very heavily foiled isn't that lovely and like this stripy sort of almost like tire marks on the back there so really stunning papers. The other thing that we've got here is we've got some cotton paper. Now this is lovely for um, scrunching up, for um, people who've made flowers with it. You can die cut some of those frames out of it. It embosses beautifully. So it's cotton paper and you've got two colours here. There are two main colours running throughout this, apart from the gold. There is the early evergreen and the soft succulent. And so you've got both of those colours in that cotton paper. And there are, I think, 10 sheets. So five of each colour in there. And the other thing is these garden gems and they're sort of I don't know, sort of soft succulent tea and cherry cobbler E in colour. And I sort of say that E bit because as you can see, um, as you move them around in the light, the colour very much changes. So you go from a quite deep red to an almost blue in these top ones. And you've got a whole rainbow of colours going on in these greeny ones just here. So really beautiful gems. So that is the um, Eden's Garden collection. And that is what we are going to use as we create a pinwheel card. Now, this will be the first time I've actually created a pinwheel card. So say it's something that I've wanted to play with for a while um, and haven't yet got round to. So, First thing I am going to take is um, piece of DSP, and I'm going to go with <coughs> doesn't really matter which one I use. Here. <coughs> and we're also going to need some evening evergreen cardstock. Now, I'm going to aim to have a card that is going to fit into a standard size envelope. Um, so, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to cut this this way so it is ten and a half centimeters wide and you know take your standard cardstock and put it in half whichever is normal for you um, in fact we will alter the size of this slightly in a minute but I just wanted to show you where we are starting from so the size of a standard card so that I'd folded that in half in the size of a standard card once folded here in the UK and elsewhere where you a use a4 cardstock will be 14.9 centimeters long by 10 and a half centimeters deep um, in places where you use imperial cardstock that is um, five and a half by four and a quarter so we are going to need some panels of cardstock and each of our panels when put together needs to make up that sort of size so in theory we're going to cut that in half now obviously here in the uk we are 14.9 
centimeters so that starts to get very complicated so i'm not going to worry too much about the point 0.9 i'm going to take it back to 14.8 and i'm going to cut four panels that are 7.4 so they are just a slither because actually in truth the half of a piece of cardstock isn't even 14.9 it's 14.85 so you can see that um yeah you really 7.4 will work beautifully so you want four pieces of cardstock if you are creating a card in a out of a four metric cardstock that are 7.4 by um 10 and a half 7.4 by 10 and a half now if you keep that in mind if you bear in mind that whatever you want your finished card size to be whatever size envelope you want it to go into your starting point is to take that size card and cut that in half to form two panels so whether you are looking at doing a five by seven card whether you're looking at doing a note card in three and a half by five whether you're looking at imperial measurements whether you want to have a go at one that's six by six eight by eight whatever size card you want to finish with just bear in mind that think front panel cut in half and you need four of those okay so we are starting as i say with 7.4 by 10 and a half and we've got four of those and then we need to create <coughs> our little tower column in the middle of our finished card now we can use cardstock for this um but it can perhaps get a little bit chunky so i'm actually going to use a piece of dsp um, and i'm going to cut this so that it is 10 and a half centimetres deep. So obviously that's the same as our card pieces. And then I'm going to cut it so that it is 11 centimetres wide. OK, so it's 10 and a half deep by 11 and 11 centimetres wide. I'm actually going to bring in my scoreboard at this point. Um, two reasons. One is it's nice to get it out sometimes and play. And the other is my score blade has temporarily um, gone missing in action. Um, so what I'm going to do with this piece of paper, I've actually got my metric board. So I've got my scoreboard and I've got my metric board on the top. You can see where I have previously scattered orange, um, splattered orange gold paint um, and splattered my board. But I'm going to take my metric scoreboard. Now, with the metric scoreboard, um, over here, you've got one centimetre, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you've got um, some smaller measurements that aren't half centimetres. So you've got... 26 millimetres, 3.7 millimetres, 5.25, um, 7.4, 10.5. So other useful measurements that you might want, but you haven't got the half centimetre measurements. When you get to the halfway point, when you get to the 15 centimetre point, you then get half centimetre measurements. Now, I actually want to score this at two and a half centimetre increments or an inch so i could have very easily have just used the imperial board and done this at an inch but if you want to do it in um, centimeters what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it across to the 20 centimeters so i'm going to start at 20 rather than starting at naught and so i want to go at two and a half centimeters five centimeters seven and a half centimeters and ten so we're just going to add 20 to that so it's going to be 22 and a half 25 27 and a half and 30. So you've got, by starting at 20, we've got the same numbers, if you like, the two and a half, the five, the seven and a half, and the, the round zero. I'm going to move that to one point, to one side again. So here we have our paper, and I've scored it on this side because 
Um, actually, I don't know. I think I actually want. I'm actually going to have it so that gold foil is showing in the middle. I'm going to fold that around because I'm going to make that into a column. So obviously this little one centimetre tab on here is going to um, be my bit that I'm going to stick down. If you're doing this in inches, you want it to be whatever the height of your panel is. And you need these to be about an inch so um, you would make that whatever the height is and you'd make it four and a half inches wide and then screw it at inch intervals and that would give you half an inch on the side to create your tab we've got a centimeter on the side here to create our tab and i'm going to run some tear and tape down there just bring in my take a pick tool you can take the backing off of that and fold that round, stick it down. And we now have a, um, a nice column and on the inside we can see that gold foiling. So that is that will be visible. That inside piece is the piece that is going to be visible when we've finished. Now we are now going to stick some panels in place. I'm just mooching around and wondering. So we have a couple of options here. We could either go with some more tear and tape or I have found my stamping seal plus here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these panels So I have literally put some stamping seal plus on that panel just there. I am going to run a bit more down this edge. So I am going to stick that panel so that it rests against this score line just here. Like that. Let's move that over and we're going to go to this next panel just here and we're going to put some sticky on that. I think my stamping seal has been sitting for a while and has um, glued up a little bit. So let's revert to tear and tape for now. You could, of course, use um, wet glue as well. So we've got a couple of strips of tear and tape on that panel just there. Let's lift those. Let's stick this next one in up against this score line. Let's move it over. Next panel. So there's my score line. A couple of strips of tear and tape down there. I promise I will put those in the bin. So stick that down there and then last but not least last panel on there. So 
now if we lift that up you can see that we have our pinwheel card we've got our foiled paper in the center and then we have all of these funnels that will open up as we flip it round this is what we are going to decorate now where's my ruler we know that this one is seven oh sorry banging the camera this one is 7.4 this little panel here is about 4.7 I think we'll say 4.8 so this panel here it's 4.8 and you can see that as it rests down flat the whole thing will fit nicely into a um, standard card a standard envelope so I'm going to write down there 4.8 and 7.4 so we know that our panels of paved DSP that we're going to put on there, that one is 10.5 by um, 7.4. So to make a panel for that, we'll want it to be 6.9 by 10. And then this one, 4.8 by 10.5. So we'll need that to be 4.3 by 10 for a little panel to go in there. So now we get to decide, play about it with our papers so we have one two three large four large panels and four small panels to decorate so let's have a little look at what papers we want to use <coughs> the answer to that is we want to use them all one I'm missing it does look quite similar to that one from a, a distance but it is actually different so I think I am going to have a general theme running through of that one I'm going to have that as my narrow panel on each one because it sort of is quite a, a bold design I think we'll go with that one and that one so one, two, I think we'll have a panel each out of those and we'll probably come back in with that for something else. So let's cut those panels up first. Now let's take this paper and let's go with our 4.3 by 10. So I'm going to that at 4.3. Open this up. I'll take it to 30 centimeters because, of course, obviously this is about 30.5. So we need to snip off that extra half a centimeter. And then I'll cut it at 20. And 10 so that gives us three panels and then we need a fourth panel again cut it at 4.3 and then we'll just snip one off there at 10. we we'll come back to that paper who knows so i'm just going to bring in my normal stamping seal now and let's 
put some stamping seal on here. And let's pop that down on that panel. And last but not least, let's have one on there. So that's our side panels all done. Now we need to do these panels just here. We need them to be 10 centimeters by 6.9. And obviously, if your panels were, I'm just making these half a centimeter small, smaller than that um, front panel. And brave and cut two at once. Let's come in at Point nine, and we'll cut off the strip down there. This one is that looked quite narrow then, but it is indeed six point nine, and then we'll cut that at ten. Number two, number three, and we've got one more to go. by 10. <clears throat> so let's I'll go this slightly pale one next. And is there a particular right and wrong way? I'm going to go with that way. Then we'll come this one with the white background. And last but not least, this one just here. There we have all of our panels decorated. <clears throat> so now we want to add in some greetings and things. Now I want to make this a Christmas card. So obviously there isn't any Christmas greetings in here. So I'm going to bring in the Christmas to remember stamp set. Um, and we've got a couple of things in here. So we've got the the friends like you make this season special. That would be quite nice for one panel. Um, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. That might be quite nice on another panel. On one of the panels, I'm going to put a little pocket with a tag in so that I've got somewhere to write my greeting. Um, and... <clears throat> We'll just have a Merry Christmas, but we may well 
cut that into two sections. Now I think I will cut myself one of those little frames. We'll cut ourselves some of this border, use that for some decoration. Um, I might actually cut one of those and then cut it in half for that Merry Christmas. So I think I'm going to do all of that out of uh, the evergreen. <coughs> and rather than cutting into that whole big section that would make a card base, I have got some smaller oddments here. So let me go and die cut those. While we're at it, we'll perhaps die cut a couple of them. moved in transit. I'm going to put those down for a moment. see that you get this really nice cut but they've got these sort of die cut lines in here as well so we've got a couple of those now this frame you get the bit that pops out of the middle and then you get this really lovely intricate frame piece going to be able to use for something beautiful I'm sure we have this banner piece just here let's pop these bits out And then we have this border. Now this border is actually cut out of the cardstock at the bottom, but has remained in the cardstock at the top. And we've got like this stitched element. So I'm going to leave myself quite a bit of a border on there. And you can see you have this really lovely piece just here. There's some bits there that need popping out. There we go. Lay that down there. So we've got our foliage, our sentiment panel. A frame obviously this is going to be a much bigger frame but um, far too big for our project I think that's one to save for another day I 
I'm going to take this little foliage piece and some soft succulent card as well and cut myself at least one soft succulent piece. Might go two for good measure. Crash. Box falls to the ground. I've now got the game of picking up all the rolls of twine off of the floor when I've finished. Hey ho! There we are, so we've got two pieces of soft succulent foliage there as well. rid of all these little bits off of here and let's grab our evening evergreen and salt circular ink pads and let's have a bit of a play so I've got my block With this Merry Christmas, this piece of soft succulent um, card, and some fairly evergreen ink. And let's just put that on there. Grabbed my long scissors just because they make it easier when you're trimming something like this. I seem to have a bird tap dancing on the roof, so apologies if you can hear him. I'm sure he's having a lovely time. Going to trim this right down. I've been out of video action for a week or so. These glue sitting on here haven't been used, so let's get one going. I'm going to pop that on there, might need to fill it up a little bit. May need another one to fit my Christmas on. Yes, let's cut ourselves another <coughs> banner because we haven't quite got enough room to get that Christmas. I'm sure that I did, I think it, I'm sure I've used it as a Merry Christmas all in one piece, but because we're snipping it. We'll cut ourselves another because we can. That's the lovely thing, isn't it? When you've got the dies, you're not reliant on there being a finite amount of pieces. Like if I've just bought a kit of fancy, so that is that way. So I want this end so that we're. matching. Let's just trim this down.
Christmas coming across there. I'm not going to stick those down yet because I might want something else on there. I'm just going to leave those laying in there. And to take Friends like you make this season special. Do I want that one? Or do I want? Let's go. May this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. Now, the other thing I need to decide is which is there one in particular I want to be at the back. I might make that my back panel. So if that's my back panel, we'll make that panel number three. Panel number two and this panel number one. One, two, three, back panel. So I'm going to put a pocket on that panel. So I think we'll have this one saying, May this be a Christmas to remember. This one with our Merry Christmas. this one with friends like you which one is like a rainbow that will fit that beautifully um, wide possibly not mm. decisions decisions and friends. Let's do the big one in soft supplement. The smaller one in basic white. I cut those. As you can see, this really isn't a is one I made earlier. You are along with me in the creative process, as always. What shall we make today? That is the sort of the whole idea. We're going to make a pinwheel card. Some reason I didn't quite catch the top of that die. I could run it through again, but actually, I think it literally is a question that I didn't quite catch the top of it. I'm just going to snip it out. And friends like you make this season special. And come in again this evening to green. So we'll have a bit of soft succulent, we'll have a bit of early green, and then we'll have a bit of that border coming across the bottom.
avoiding using dimensionals is that the one that we haven't got working yes fighting with the wrong glue I think I'll just have it it just fits across the front of let's just take a slurp of water and have a look to see what I've done with my scissors two pairs on here they seem to go for the walk they can't have walked far me thinks uh -huh. <laughs> I just tucked them underneath something so about there okay. if we come in let's sneak around that piece of foliage just there Right, so let me stick that on. So yes, we want to avoid things like dimensions because obviously this is going to be relatively bulky anyway. Friends like you make this season special. I'm going to come in to do this one. May this be a Christmas to remember. our frame so as is often the case do as I do and not as I do as I say not as I do if you're cutting this out probably better to use double-sided adhesive sheets rather than trying to stick down those little bits. Let's have this one coming across here. This one coming across there. So friends like you make this season special. Merry Christmas. <clears throat> May this be a Christmas to remember. We've got a little bit more a bit more there of the border going to do let's take that off of there I promise I clean these up later there I'm actually going to come in to the Eden's garden I might take this little one just here. I'm going to cut this round, straightening it up a little bit as I go. I'm 
going to grab the sort of succulent. Now a little bit of foliage just here. Now let's bring some of that in around here. And we have that. Do we've got enough to make that top and bottom? Let's see. Need to run a little bit of glue along the bottom there. enough perfect let's just pop that up there like that For our final piece, Oops. Fine, this is what I'm looking for. Pieces on the back. Oh, that one's quite nice. So I'm going to cut that. So we know this is 6.9. I'm going to cut it at 7.9. Bring back in my scoreboard, turn it the right way round, and I'm going to score it at half a centimetre on three sides. I should actually perhaps have had this the other way round, but it won't make much difference. So just half a centimetre on these three sides. I'm going to take my scissors and you perhaps can't see those score lines very well but where these two score lines meet I'm just going to snip across them like that and I'm going to fold these little tabs under to make a little pocket now I'm not going to get any tear and tape on there so I'm just going to run a little piece, a little dribble off. Glue across those three sides. Stick that down there and then that will make us rather a nice little pocket. I'm going to take See what I've got to do. I don't think I've got a piece quite big enough. So I'm going to cut this so it is five centimeters wide, and we know that this is ten and a half centimeters long. Obviously, you don't want it to be as long as that. I'm actually going to go eight and a half centimeters i think so i've got a piece there that's five centimeters by eight and a half centimeters i'm going to come in with the delightful tax topper push that right in and now we have
have a nice fancy tag that will fit in there. And to cut a piece of basic white. Making it 4.9 by 8.4, so it's just a millimeter smaller on each side. Sit that in there. So it is central. I'm going to stick that on the back because that would then give me something to apply it on. Line that up so the white isn't visible from that side. Now we need to decorate this. I'll come in with that one paper that we didn't use because, well, we don't want to leave any man standing with that. Cut this so it's four and a half centimeters wide by eight. Let's reach that too. Could have stuck all these together and done it all in one go, which probably would have been better. Let's get that lined up so that we're happy it's fairly central. Had I done it all together, there wouldn't have been a slightly larger gap at the bottom. Now we do have our little bits of foliage here. these ones here. Let's get them the right way around. These bits here, which I think we can have coming down here. not going to want anything too um, bulky 
on the top of our tag. So I think I'm just going to take some of this gold thread. You little sparklies. Hopefully we can find them. Here they are. So I think we'll have sparkly coming in there coming across there. So there we have a little pinwheel card. Friends like you make this season special. Merry Christmas. May this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. And then we've got our little tag just here that we can flip over and write our sentiment and our greeting on. And all of that will fit in a standard envelope, medium sized envelope ready to send. I'm sure that you probably won't get away with a um, standard postage here in the UK. No, it would need to be large letter. Um, but if you've taken the time to make a card like that for somebody special, then um, I'm sure you're not going to begrudge them the extra postage. And of course, we've also got that bit of foiling showing up in our central panel just there. So that is a little pinwheel card. And as I say, you can play around with those as long as you remember that basic um, idea that your starting panel needs to be the size of your finished card cut in half. And you need four of those panels to fit around your central pinwheel. Um, so that. Um, Eden collection, that Eden's garden collection is available, as I said, now on the sh on my shop. So do head over there and add it into your basket. Um, the entire collection, so the stamps, the dies, um, the designer series paper, the pack of cotton paper, and the beautiful embellishments, the whole collection all together comes to £77.50 if you want everything in that collection, and who doesn't? Um, but it is also available to purchase um, in its sort of individual components. So let's come on back up here. Thank you for joining me today as we've discovered what we're going to make today, a pinwheel card with our Eden Garden Collection. Um, so stay well. Do make sure that you subscribe to my channel um, and get notifications to let me know when I'm going live again. And do head over and check me out on my website or my other social media channels. And if you have any questions or I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to get in contact and I'll be back with you very soon.